And today on our Chica interview, we're going to be talking to Patty Lennon. And she's on a mission to empower moms to get themselves back on their priority list. How are you? Good. Good? How are you doing? You look great. Thing. Here's the thing. You and I connected uh, a while back through Saver. And one of the things that I loved about connecting with you is like, I didn't have to explain myself, ab how I felt about motherhood because you absolutely understood it and you got it. One of the things that, you know, when I meet other moms and, you know, a, a little apprehensive, you know, when initially I was a little apprehensive about talking about my whole story with dealing post, with postpartum and, and, and trying to find out, um, you know, the root of why I felt the way I did about motherhood. And it, I would always tell people, you know, it's not about the kid, you know, but people would automatically, you know, I guess I, f I feared the judgment that people are going to think I'm a kook because I freaking hate, <laughs> like you say, the job descript description sometimes, you know. So tell us a little bit about your story, how you got to your, the place where you are now um, and how you're, you know, empowering other moms to, to put themselves back on that priority list, which is so necessary. Yeah, it, you know, it is really necessary. Mm -hmm. And where I started was um, I was at a corporation. So mm -hmm. I was the vice president at a bank. My life, um, by all accounts, was great. You yeah. know, it was exactly what a lot of women today are looking for. I had been working for my corporation for 15 years. They were extremely generous and flexible with where I worked, when I worked, mm -hmm. how many hours I worked. Um, I had a great husband. He supported me working. He supported me as a mom. I had two healthy children. I had a daycare provider that I loved. They had a curriculum I loved. I mean, generally speaking, all was well. Yeah. And um, But the story that no one saw was that I was 25 pounds overweight. I went to bed most nights worrying about something. I woke up most mornings worrying about something. And then one day I was holding my baby girl. She was six months old. And I looked at her and I thought, you deserve better than this. Yeah. It just killed me that I could have this amazing daughter and this amazing son and not be happy. Yeah. And, you know, just then, just as I thought that thought, another thought came like zooming in. I'm pretty sure it was like a grandmother or a great grandmother watching over me and said, well, you're all she's got, so what are you going to do about it? And that's when I started figuring out how to get happy again. Yeah. And, and, and I think that that, um, like for me, it was, you know, realizing, okay, I'm unhappy with myself, you know, and how I'm dealing with, um, you know, caring for this child. But I'm also feeling incredibly guilty for feeling yeah. like this. You know, mm -hmm. how important is it that we get ourselves back to, to on track? Yeah. And I think, you know, one of the important starting points is first to acknowledge that you want to be happy as a mom. Yeah. And that you want that more than you want some external group of people acknowledging you, acknowledging you as a good mom. Yeah. And I think that's very different because it's when we go after some other version of good mom, other than what we have created for ourselves, mm -hmm. that we start down that path of disillusionment, of yeah. frustration, of anger. Because the reality is, you know, I wasn't built to be a mom who made baby food from scratch. And yet I beat myself up for not being that person. And that was a source of discomfort for me. And it was one tiny one and each one built on each other. My child, my first baby was colic, yeah. but I was not built to hold my baby um, 24 seven, like the expert book said. Mm -hmm. And so I felt terrible. I felt like I had something to do with it. Mm -hmm. Um, so all of these little choices where we choose that, you know, what other people think a good mom looks like, yeah. um, that moves us away from happiness. And by moving away from happiness, we move away from being happy as a mom yeah. and as a woman. And that's and I, something that you just said is really important um, because I, you know, the conversation that I always hear from mom, especially is like, well, I'm a mom now and like, that's all I have to look forward to. You know, how important is it that we understand that because we've become moms, it doesn't mean that we're still not women, that we don't have aspirations, that we don't have dreams, that we can't go after, you know, that idea that we had three years before we had the baby. Like how important is that we acknowledge, like, you know, it's being a mom does not mean that that's it. You're done, you know, yeah. that you're done. <laughs>
Well, you know, I think that um, the, the time has come for us to separate mom as the entire identity, yeah. as mom as part of the identity. Yeah. And I really think that's what the mothers that went before us really wanted to do, to help us with. Yeah. They, that's the legacy they wanted to leave us with. However, the legacy we're, we've been left with is that we need to be mom awesome, amazing, perfect. And we need to be career, if that's what we chose, awesome, amazing, perfect. We need to be wife, gorgeous, sexy, happy to have sex whenever, you know, the moment arises. Yeah. We need to have an amazingly clean house. Exactly. You know, it, rather than handing us a legacy of you get to choose, yeah. we got a legacy of you can have everything and you better well damn do everything yeah. perfectly. Yeah. And, and it's self-imposed. It's completely self-imposed, it but it's there. Yeah. And I think we, as a generation, have an amazing opportunity to shift the perception of women um, in terms of that motherhood is an aspect that some women choose and some women don't choose. And those that don't choose it are amazing and whole and perfect. Correct. And those that do choose it, choose it as an aspect of their existence. And they're amazing and whole and perfect um, even if and because they have other aspects of their life that they get just as excited about. Exactly. No, and yeah. I and I agree. I think that that's um, that's huge. Um, kind of like that. Like it, it it's it was huge for me, and um, I'm still trying though to get like my husband to understand um, that he didn't marry Be Betty Crocker. You know what I mean? Like I I I'm trying. Like I try every day. To, to be present for my kids. Like, to me, it's more important to sit down, you know, get down on the floor and play a game with them than go bake a cake. Like, I, you know, but then I, the assumption is, you know, culturally that I'm supposed to get down on the floor, play with them, clean the house, bake the cake, make the dinner, and then, yes, look hot when, I, when my husband comes home from work and be like, how was your day? You know, and, and, and the reality is, um, there's some days that I shower by 3 p.m. You know, I have not yeah. had the time within my day to, because there's, there's other priorities and, and it's okay to have, you know, those other priorities. Um, and, and like you said, get excited about other aspects of my life, you know, or of my day that are going on. So, um, really what I, I, I know that you are um, coming up with these live retreats that you're doing, right? Which I'm yeah. super excited about for you yeah. and for other moms. Um, because I think that, you know, the, the, the moment that we decide to kind of give ourselves a little space and a little bit of time for ourselves, again, the guilt factor comes in because we, we understand that, oh, this is probably either money that I should be spending on something for my kids or time that I should be spending on something for my family. Um, how important is it that, you know, whether we're in business or not, just a mom, how important is it that we give ourselves that space? You know, what does that do to us as, as a human being? What does that do to us? Well, I think if you don't count yourself number one on your priority list, you have diminished the life force inside of you. Yeah. And that means if you're doing, supposedly doing this for your children, let's say, or your husband or who you're supposed to be, um, by becoming a smaller human being or becoming, you know, dimming your light, you're giving your children um, an example of what that looks like to yeah. dim their own light. And that is not what you want to pass on. So I think the first place to start is to think about why you wouldn't put yourself first okay. and, and really think about it and then go, okay, well, then that doesn't make sense because most of all, I want my children to be big in the world. I want my family to grow and thrive. Yeah. And the leader, the, you know, the emotional leader of this family needs to grow and thrive in order for that to happen. So that's number one. Number two is um, that and this is, I'm becoming clearer and clearer on this, is that you must, must, must acknowledge your financial power in the world. Yeah. And so if you need to create income to own your ability to spend money on yourself, then it's really crucial you do that, yeah. whether your family needs it or not. I, I just, I, I've tried to figure out how to convey this message without saying make money yeah. and raised during a time where money is a power. Yeah. Well, I mean, money's always been empowered, but yeah. for us, we understood how to create it for ourselves. Yeah. If you're in a marriage where 
the fact that you're at home with your children gives you as a couple and you as an individual the understanding that you are a fu- full financial partner in that family, mm-hmm. then that's awesome because yeah. you've done something that most of us haven't figured out how to yeah. do. But for those of you who need to create money to spend it on yourself, and I do think that that's part of the equation, I really think creating income, finding a small way to create income is critical yeah. to that equation. Yeah. And that's, and, and that, I mean, how much more, I, there's just so much that can come out of something like that because, you know, like I have a, a friend that is going through some difficulties with motherhood as well. You know, we talk on a weekly basis. I, I keep tabs with her. Just mm-hmm. And she's like, you know, and I see all these, she, one of her, her things is like, I see all these amazing, amazing things that you're doing. And I, and I get so happy because at least I know that, you know, that there's somebody out there that's doing it. And I turn around and say, listen, you can do this for yourself too. Um, it's a matter of finding, you know, what it is that you're passionate about and turning yeah. it around and making, uh, making it either into a I'm just a huge proponent for entrepreneurship and, um, in motherhood. Yeah. And I have a good friend and a fellow coach named Lori Foley. And she said this to me a long time ago and it's really stuck because she said, you know, entrepreneurship is not new for mothers. Yeah. It's very, very old. And it's only two generations where we lost it, but two generations back and then going back forever, moms were always entrepreneurs. They were taking and sewing. They were making crafts. They built things. They sold you know, good. Yeah. This is a very normal thing for mothers to do. And it was a very um, important part of the solution, the economic solution of families. So I think that's part of it. The other part of entrepreneurship and why I'm such a huge proponent of it is that to me, and I know you feel the same way too, is like, it's exciting. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, creates, it creates a sense of adventure. Yeah. When you're creating even $1,000 a month, yeah. $500 a month on your own of something you did yourself, there's there's romance in your life. Yeah. There's adventure. It's like ending these um, interviews with, um, you know, you as your expert from your perspective, what would be the one thing you would say to that mom that is either trying to figure out, mm-hmm. you know, the whole why am I unhappy feeling, you know, trying to just or craving something more, you know, what would be the one thing that you would say to them to kind of get them going, you know? It's, um, spend five minutes with yourself alone every single day. That's it. Just quietly, not a book, not a movie, you know, make the fir- the five minutes for yourself at the Alibal and watch what happens. Watch how much wisdom and knowledge and amazing love that can dictate next steps comes just from listening to yourself. It's, it's really, it's mind blowing. And then if you struggle to do it, check in with yourself on why you can't make five minutes for yourself, you know, and really figure it out, and then create that space and create that time. And of course, just like you, Vanessa, I'm always around. I'm always available to answer questions. You know, I'm there. MomGetsAlife.com. You just shoot me an email. I'll answer it. You can't find those five minutes. I'll find them for you. (laughs) That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Vanessa.